Hi, I'm Jake and welcome to a video review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Gigabyte GTX 550 Ti Overclock Graphics Card. The GTX 550 Ti GPU is very overclockable, which is why we've seen so many manufacturers changing the clock speeds or putting their own custom coolers on it. Uh, this one is of course no exception. The GPU core clock speed is increased from 900MHz to 970MHz and the VRAM is increased from 4104 MHz to 4200 MHz effective. So, looking at the bottom of the card, we can already see that uh, Gigabyte have put a custom cooler on it. Now, um, Gigabyte have a lot of experience in custom coolers, as we know, and they've made some very good ones in their time, so we're hoping this one won't disappoint. Uh, it has a large 10 cm fan that's designed to provide silent cooling, as well as an equally large flower style heatsink underneath. Now, looking at the PCB side, we can see that they have stuck to NVIDIA's reference design. Now, this is probably for the best, as the card, I mean, just judging by the length of the PCIe connector compared to the card or like to my hand, we see that it's already very, very small. So, by fiddling with the PCB, they won't really be achieving anything. There's no point making it smaller. As terms of uh, cooling goes, it's a very effective layout. So by tweaking the PCB, they won't really be achieving any noticeable gain. All they would be doing was increasing manufacturing costs, which is of course a bad thing for them and us. So it's probably for the best that they left it. However, they have put uh, their custom blue PCB on it, uh, as is typical of Gigabyte. So now if we have a quick look at the back, we can also see, as per the NVIDIA reference design, that there is a 6-pin PCIe power connector, a single one. So that's good for people running uh, smaller power supplies. Now, although Gigabyte have stuck to a reference PCB layout, uh, this hasn't stopped them putting some of their ultra-durable features on the card. Uh, now, my favourite of these features is the 2-ounce copper PCB. Uh, this is a fantastic feature. When you're installing or removing your graphics card, it's very nice to know that you're not going to damage it by flexing it and it's noticeably solider, which is, uh, noticeably more solid, sorry, uh, <laughs> which is uh, very reassuring when you're working with your graphics card. Also, uh, another benefit of this 2 ounce copper PCB is it does aid in cooling and uh, prevents, it helps prevent damage by static discharge, so once again when you're installing it. It also, when you've got your card, you may know, if you've got a card in your computer for a long time, it's not supported from this end, it's only supported by the, by the I.O. end. So as it keeps getting heated and that kind of thing, it will uh, eventually flex over time. Not so much with these shorter cards, but with uh, some of the longer cards. The 2 ounce copper PCB will uh, prevent this happening to such a great extent, so it will uh, definitely prolong the life of your graphics card. In addition to that feature, which is of course my favourite as I mentioned, you have uh, these Japanese solid capacitors, as well as uh, metal metal ferrite core chokes. It also uses tier 1 uh, RAM, which is a uh, very good quality RAM, and I believe in this case they're using Samsung. If we take a look at the rear I.O., we can see that they, uh, they use a very basic uh, layout that has become pretty standard these days. We've got two DVI ports, as well as a mini HDMI port. This, of course, comes with an adapter to convert it to a normal size HDMI port. You can see that this card comes with a single SLI finger for two-way SLI. Uh, with a card of this price, around £130, SLI is a very good idea. Now, although I would always recommend getting a more powerful GPU to start with, if you're just getting into computers and uh, you want one of these cards as an entry-level gaming card, then uh, you pop it in your system, you play a few games, and... As time goes on you might think, I want better performance or I want to play this slightly better game. You can just pop another card in there and they, uh, they, it's a very cost effective solution. I'll talk about this quickly before we move on. and uh, I'm saying this because I've run on a few forums. A few people have got their uh, GTX 550 graphics card and have uh, been slightly worried about this. Uh, obviously the, the PCIe uh, time 16 slot here. Um, it's not supposed to come fully populated. Not all the pins are supposed to be here. Uh, a few people have uh, been slightly worried about putting it in their system without all the pins in. 
thinking that, uh, that it's possibly damaged or missing, this is how it's supposed to be, so don't worry about that. Before we move on, I want to talk quickly about how I got on with the cooler. I found it an absolutely excellent cooler. It was very silent. Um, it actually decreased the overall noise coming from my uh, coming from my case, which is fantastic. This is, of course, because a 10 centimeter fan doesn't have to spin as fast as an 80 millimeter fan to move the same amount of air. Um, so that is uh, very effective. Also, in the week, it's been in my system, and my case is very dusty. Unfortunately, there's no. When I took it out, there was no dust in the heatsink at all. I think this is because of the way the the fan pushes the air directly onto it, and it can't really build up in there. Uh, over a week, you'd expect some amount of dust to uh, form, but I honestly couldn't find anything. So that's great. The one criticism I have of this cooler, and it's not it's not just of this cooler, but it's of of uh, most coolers you'll find, is that what they tend to forget is that this is the bottom you don't see this part so they put all this uh, decoration on the bottom but when it's actually in your case all you see is this now I think the blue PCB which if you've got like a gigabyte motherboard it'll make it look a lot better but all you can really see is this side bit of plastic and uh, part of the core that sticks out which to be honest doesn't look uh, particularly good. What I'd like to have seen is for them to bring this shroud uh, closer up to the PCB, maybe put a little bit of a design on it, maybe some LEDs, maybe backlight it a bit. Uh, just It'd just be nice to see, uh, for those who have a windowed case, it'd be nice to see something to uh, make the, the graphics card look a bit special. But I understand that uh, it's a budget uh, graphics card, so this isn't uh, a priority as well as the fact that, um, that this is a fantastic cooler and this is only a minor criticism of it. So now we're taking a good look at the car, we've seen how it should perform, we've seen all its features, it's now time to actually run some benchmarks and see how it performs properly. Uh, we've put this card up against a few similar cards that uh, people in the market for a card like this would be looking at as an alternative. So. Uh, it should be very interesting to see how it performs compared to its competitors. First test we're on was 3D Mark 11. 3D Mark 11 is uh, the new standard for benchmarking graphics cards. It features DirectX 11 along with lots of other various technologies used in modern games. It's a very stressful test for graphics cards. Uh, so this, this is quite a low end graphics card to put against a test as uh, harsh as this but again so are the ones it's competing against. The card did not perform very well in this test. It was beaten by the 5770 which is much older but it does beat the GTX 450 which is of course the previous generation equivalent of the 550 tie. As we've seen in the past though uh, 3D Mark is not necessarily a very good uh, representation of how it performs in the real world i.e. Uh, games. So we'll move on to see how it actually performs in game. First game we put the uh, the GTX 550 Ti against was Mafia 2. Now Mafia 2 is not the kind of game I would uh, expect a GTX 550 Ti to uh, play, as Mafia 2 is quite a demanding game graphically. So I would reserve it primarily for the higher end graphics cards. What I wanted to find out was if someone trying to get into PC gaming uh, had a fairly limited budget wanted to spend only 130 quid on a graphics card could they then go and play uh, one of the most graphically demanding games out there at the moment and my answer would actually be yes it, it did uh, did surprisingly well, better than I'd expect it uh, pretty pretty solid frames per second it was a smooth uh, gameplay experience and although the GTX 550 did again fail to beat the, the 5770 I think it performed uh, pretty admirably uh, considering the game we was put up against. So the second game we put the uh, GTX 550 against was uh, Call of Duty Black Ops. Now Black Ops is a pretty mainstream game, it's the kind of game I would uh, I would think that the GTX 550 was suited to. It's, uh, it's not particularly graphically demanding but it still uh, requires a fairly uh, fairly substantial amount of graphics uh, power to play the game. 
So uh, we we put it up against it, and this is where the uh, the 550 showed uh, some of its muscle. It didn't stutter at all in game, uh, which is of course the most important bit when you're when it's such a fast-paced game. Stuttering is the last thing you want. Um, it pulls away in this from the stock GTX 550, the gigabyte version, and uh, we can also see that it beats the 50, 5770 and the 450 in the uh, 1080p test. And taking it down to 720p is like releasing the cards because it then beats all of the all of the cards we put up against except for the 460 and the GTX, the stock GTX 550 beats the uh, beats the 5770 convincingly in this test uh, so it, th this shows that resolution is quite a limiting factor on the uh, GTX 550 GPU so I wouldn't if I was buying a card for full HD gaming I'd maybe consider something slightly better because when you're running this it's let's say 720p or something slightly lower this card uh, can really perform but when you start bringing it up to full HD then it starts to uh, it starts to show its uh, lack of power a little bit. So the next test we gave the 550 tie was Heaven Benchmark 2.1. Now, Heaven Benchmark is a pretty industry standard test for DirectX 11 cars, as it was one of the first DirectX 11 benchmarks released. Um, Heaven makes use of really really nice looking. Uh, tessellation that creates a very fantastic looking world and it really shows what uh, PCs can do these days. The stock GTX 550 and the Gigabyte version of it perform pretty well in this test. It shows that uh, the GTX 550 in general, the actual GPU of it, can handle uh, anti-aliasing and anti-strophic filtering um, with no problem at all and it performs well in tessellation so uh, the Heaven Benchmark is a very tessellated world and um, the 550 performs very very well in it. It's dropping it then to a lower resolution once again uh, allows it to perform much better. It beats the 6850 which is fantastic and gets very close to beating the 460 which, um, which is the clear leader of uh, the benchmarks it will be doing. So. It does perform very well in Heaven Benchmark, so Tesla's environments and Taylor's in, it does a good job. So, after looking at all the features and benchmarks of this card, we're now left with a few questions for those who are looking to buy the card. Now, the main question is, of course, is this the Gigabyte GTX 550 worth the extra £10 over the stock GTX 550? Is it worth paying the extra for uh, what comes with this card? And I would say absolutely yes. This card is fantastic. The cooler on it cools both quietly and effectively. It has a significant performance gain over the stock GTX 550 and is overall an amazing card. Gigabyte have done a good job with this. However, only £10 more expensive than this is the, the GTX 460, which as you've seen from the benchmarks, uh, performed the best out of all of them, hands down. So. If you have the extra £20 to spend over the stock GTX 550, get the 460 unquestionably. But if you don't have that money, you will not be disappointed with the GTX uh, 550 from Gigabyte. It's an amazing card and it performs excellently. You will not be disappointed. So, thanks for watching. This is my first uh, video review, so if you have any comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section. I'd, I appreciate the feedback and I will be reading them. Also, if you want to read the full written review that's a bit more detailed, please check the description, it'll all be in there. So uh, thanks for watching.